Greetings viewers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're back on the 2006 Outback that was featured in the worst Subaru head gasket repair video. That video, we saw that the cylinder head surface and the uh, block surface was gouged up pretty good by whoever attended the repair, as well as the fail pro, fail pro head gaskets that were installed failed as well. Uh, as I said, the car had an aftermarket warranty on it, so we were pulling the car apart to see what the warranty company wanted to do, whether they were going to pay for a head gasket replacement or if they were going to replace the entire engine. Uh, I told them or suggested to them that the engine needed to be replaced due to the damage to the head and the block and the amount of uh, machine work that was going to be involved and the amount of labor in getting that engine uh, fixed and back in the car. Uh, they didn't want to take my word for it, send an adjuster out. Well, the adjuster, after looking at it, found the exact same thing I did and has ruled to replace the engine uh, as a complete unit. So the engine has arrived at that shop. They notified me this morning. So about to head over there now and install this new used engine in the Outback. Uh, don't think we're going to do anything to it other than bolt it in, which is odd because normally LKQ and these uh, aftermarket uh, providers of salvage and used engines normally require at the minimum uh, new timing belt, cam and crank seals, and a rear main seal uh, before installing these engines to have any kind of warranty on them. So I guess the warranty company is going to eat it if anything goes wrong with the new engine on installing it. I've just been told to install this engine as it came, so that's what I am doing, although that is not what I would normally do in this situation. So with that said, I'm going to cut out here. I might do a time lapse of installing the engine, uh, transferring parts over. I'm most likely going to move the intake manifold and wiring harness over because knowing LKQ and those Savage Yard places. One thing that infuriates me when I buy used engines, uh, they cut the wiring harness and on a Subaru, it's one, uh, on the newer Subarus, it's one big bulkhead connector. On older Subarus, it was two or three big connectors at the rear of the engine near the bell housing. And it never failed, the idiots pulling the engines at the salvage yard would take the Sawzall or a set of bolt cutters and cut the main harness right at the plug rather than unplugging it. One thing that has always irked me about getting used Subaru engines, uh, but I digress. So probably gonna do a time lapse of switching components over, what components need to be switched, putting the engine in, and maybe come back with a couple clips again. I'm gonna be filming on my phone and I got the GoPro with me today. So uh, it's not gonna be up to normal video standards with my Canon DSLRs and uh, my lavalier mic so apologies for video quality and sound quality so with that said let's get to the shop well guys big fail get to the shop today to install this engine and the engine that the warranty company provided us with to install is worse than what came out uh, first off this engine has the original Subaru head gaskets installed they have not been replaced uh, along with that, these head gaskets are failed and leaking telltale signs of the oil back here at the rear of the driver's side head and the oil at the front of the passenger side head. Can't really show you. Engine came from up north. This is going into a very clean southern car. As you can see from all the rust on the oil pan, uh, just lots of corrosion and junk. Uh, this engine is probably going to be more of a nightmare than it's worth to install. So called the warranty company. They're supposed to be providing us with a new engine or a better engine or an alternative. We'll see which one's the better when it arrives on Tuesday. So this job is postponed for another week, unfortunately. Well, if this hasn't been a cluster of a nightmare to get this out back together, uh, as we saw in the last clip, when they brought us a rusty piece of junk engine with leaking head gaskets, uh, this time looks like the head gaskets have been replaced but they dropped it off the hoist uh, that had to be a good lick to break the metal cam gear here they also broke the cam sensor off of the head over here so this is the better of the two engines so we're going to go with this engine hopefully though the only thing i'm worried about is when they drop this if it 
when it broke the cam gear if it forced the cam to move enough to bend the valves into the head forcibly. So I don't know, but at least we've got a genuine Subaru timing belt. Everything looks genuine on the engine, so most likely it was taken care of. It's rust free. Uh, so it seems to be a better candidate than the last engine we had. Uh, but we're going to start transferring parts over. Again, salvage yards monkeys freaking cut every single wire on the wiring harness rather than unplugging the one main bulkhead connector. So now i got to take all this off, fish out the old wiring harness, and fish the uh, wiring harness off the car into this. So just a pain every step of the way with this all right guys i know some of you in the past doing the time belt water pump job have asked how the heck you get these crank pulleys off when they are stuck on there take a hammer I know it seems counterintuitive to hammer on the front of it. You'd think it'd make it more stuck, but it breaks up the bond of the rust in that bore and around here uh, so you can get the pulley off. All right, guys, so the engine is basically back together, almost ready to drop it into the car. Hopefully, we don't have any issues. Unfortunately, I don't have my cylinder leakage tester with me, nor does this shop have one where I can check to see if there was any damage to the valves or the uh, valve train on that cylinder head from it being dropped kind of just going on uh, Hope at this moment. I've turned the engine over by hand after setting the timing putting the new uh, Cam pulley on there and just shining a flashlight down and observing the intake and exhaust valves as I turn the engine over Everything appears to be moving correctly as it should but that is not always you know a die-hard definitive result to show that the engine is healthy and fine uh, looking inside of the timing cover everything was spick and span brand new shining silver so this was most likely a lower mileage engine probably in some kind of front-end collision uh, i have found evidence that this has had its head gaskets replaced before and i assume by subaru because of all the subaru original uh, componentry in the timing set the timing belt was fairly new you could see all the writing on it was a subaru genuine belt and uh, the reason why I think that this has been done before is if you look at the uh, Torx Plus fasteners here for the cam carrier, some of them are kind of rounded out. I think uh, whoever did this job didn't have the proper uh, Torx Plus and used a regular Torx and kind of rounded out, chowdered that out. Uh, plus the RTV, instead of being the um, in the correct location you can tell there's more squirt out than i normally see on a factory sealed engine uh, so just more evidence that i believe that this engine has been apart and had the head gaskets replaced once before underneath we are fairly clean there is a bunch of debris at the back of the engine uh, but that was because both front cv axles had ruptured and threw grease everywhere as you see the grease spatter here and the grease spatter here and on the engine mount so they had two very bad uh, front CV axles uh, so it's hard to tell what's axle grease and what could possibly be oil from a leaking head gasket but I'm pretty sure we're safe here so we basically pieced together that junkyard engine the destroyed engine and this junkyard engine so hopefully we've got a good combination that's going to function correctly but we won't know at this point until we put it in there and turn the key uh, I would like to just run home and get that compression, uh, not compression, cylinder leakage tester just to be 100% sure before I go through all the trouble of installing the engine and then having to remove it again. So, might go ahead and do that, not sure. Oh, what a nightmare this has become. Got this engine all ready to drop in, decided to go ahead and do the cylinder leakage test, and it completely fails. We have no compression in the four cylinders. It will not hold but about 30 pounds of pressure when injecting 100 in, so 70% leakage. So definitely when they drop this sucker, uh, that cam gear bust, busted and forced the cam into the pistons and bent the valves. 
So now we're back to the rusty, crusty engine that has leaking head gaskets, we know. Has the rusty oil pan almost rusted through. Has the rusted coolant pipes. But so far, this bank has had only about 5 to 6% leakage. I'm about to check this bank to see if this one's mechanically sound. So this is turning into quite the nightmare job. Y'all pray for me. So did the cylinder leakage test on this engine and we were good for one two and four three's got a burnt exhaust valve and leaking 25 percent so we're not going to use the rusty engine this one won't hold uh 30 percent in any of the cylinders even though it's the nicest engine but due to them dropping it they bent the freaking valve so I guess we're gonna fix the original engine at this point because we can't do anything else. And we'd already put the original engine outside, so calling the machine shop up now. Tearing those engines back down, getting my good cam pulley and intake and all my wiring off of it. I'm gonna put this one back on the stand, pull that head back off, or pull that head off for the first time. Send both heads of the machine shop, have them fully done, get some Subaru Genuine MLS gaskets, uh, address the block. I'm not sure what we're gonna do there. I'm gonna try to see if the machine shop will work with it or if I can block sand it or something, even though I don't wanna do that. Just enough to get it back within specification with the straight edge. This has been one more nightmare for sure. All right, guys, so it is now 3.30 in the afternoon. I got here about 10.30 this morning and have worked straight out, no breaks or anything. Uh, as we saw, I got the secondary, quote-unquote, new engine uh, put all together. Had that crushed uh, cam pulley where they dropped it off the forklift. Unfortunately, it bent the valves. That engine had almost zero compression. Luckily, I found that out before installing it in the car, so I had to re-tear uh, that engine down, tear all my good parts back off of it. Uh, the rusty engine, we went ahead and did the cylinder leakage test on. Three of the cylinders were good. Had a burn exhaust valve leaking pretty severely, about 20% leakage on cylinder number uh, three. So I decided not to use that engine, mainly because uh, the cylinder head gaskets were already leaking oil externally uh, the fact that the oil pan was nearly rusted through the heater hoses were nearly rusted through not heater hoses but pipes uh, that run along the block uh, it was going to be a lot of issue a lot of stuff to transfer over and still have some leaking head gaskets at the end of the day so that we, when, that wouldn't get us anywhere uh, so we have called the warranty company and told them we'd like to go ahead and just try to fix the engine we've got we're going to get a refund on the two salvage used engine sent out since they were both junk. Uh, now I've got a ton of labor tied up in this and I'm not going to get paid for it because of the way the insurance company or warranty company is. So I got my guy coming, uh, the machines in my head. He's going to pick the heads up, get them machined. Hopefully they are good to save. I'm sure he'll be able to save them. Um, going to call Subaru, order a master sealing gasket kit gonna go ahead and sub out the coated head gaskets for the turbo head gaskets the MLS gaskets uh, like I said I'm gonna try to work on the block surface it's not very far out just a little bit so I assume I'm gonna try block sanding it just to get it within specification for flatness although that's not really the way I want to do it but I'm not tearing down that short block the warranty company is not gonna pay me the hours of labor uh, to do this, I really stepped in it on this job. I thought it was going to be a quick and easy job. I was called in to diagnose a cylinder four misfire that, of course, was that blown head gasket, then turned into want to fix this sort of repair. We'll pay you, okay. And now it's two bad engines. This engine needing machining and a whole bunch of complicated crap. And we were on like two weeks so far working on this thing. Luckily, the customer has another vehicle and they're getting by but uh, it's just turned out to be a very poor situation. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up just because of how drawn out this was. I thought we'd have a conclusion to this in this video, but it's gonna be a continuing saga. 
So with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.